Hi everyone, and welcome to the Jesuit Institute. Since COVID began in the year 2020 from April, we have consistently tried to record and offer you a Mass, and now in recent times, this encounter with the Word on Sundays. But after considering everything that we need to consider at the Jesuit Institute, our vision and mission, and also knowing that many things are on offer, we have decided that from the beginning of Advent in 2023, we will no longer be putting out this Sunday devotion. Now, I understand for some of you, this may be disappointing. On the other hand, there is so much that is on offer. You've been invited to return to your parishes. I know for some people that may be difficult. But on the internet, there is an abundance of offerings. And so we invite you not to feel abandoned, but perhaps to look and to see what else may be helpful to you and your growth in the Spirit as you continue to journey with the Lord. And so, on the Feast of Christ the King, we will bring these encounters with the Word to an end. I invite you most especially, if you can, to return to your faith community, to be part of your faith community. And if you can't do that, to look for other options that will be helpful to you. I want to also thank you for your support over the years that we have done this. We have had so many encounters with new people because of these weekly broadcasts. So thank you for your support. And please be assured that we at the Jesuit Institute continue to find ways of helping and supporting you in your spiritual life. If you'd like to know more, feel free to go to our website, jesuitinstitute.org. .za. God bless you. Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the Scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold I, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when some of his sheep have been scattered abroad. So I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. 
I will seek the lost, and I will bring, bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the crippled, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will watch over. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, rams and he-goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Jesus. to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for the length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came to death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things under him, that God may be everything to everyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Jesus. to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? 
And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, not too many kings uh, sit in judgment these days, but there are other aspects we can think of. When we think of Christ the King, what image comes to our mind? What picture? Do we see him, say, dressed up like a European monarch, swathed in ermine? Does he wear a top-heavy crown? Or is he in military uniform? Does he carry a sword or an ornamental stick to show that he has the power to punish? Ultimately, he has the power over life and death definitely a judge. Perhaps we might imagine him as a Southern African king, like the king of Swaziland, or the king of Lesotho, or a Zulu or a Tosa king. Um, but if we feel perhaps a little uncomfortable with all these attempts at enculturation, I think that is as it should be, and I think the Lord himself would share our, our unease. Some aspects of our human kings and our human queens do not fit at all well with Christ the King. For example, how can we imagine the Prince of Peace swaggering around in a military uniform or brandishing a spear? The unease about earthly kings is, is deeply biblical, of course. It goes back beyond the New Testament. We recall in the book of Samuel, in the debate around the people of Israel's request to the Lord for an earthly king. And there is uh, the fundamental problem that this request implied a kind of dethronement of Yahweh, their one and only true king. But it was also about the way kings behaved and still behave today. Uh, in a hereditary monarchy, because the power comes by right of birth and not by merit, an extreme form of entitlement can be the result. So you get royals who think they can do anything uh, because they are not as other men or women. On the other hand, you do also sometimes get kings and other aristocrats who take the view that, uh, as the French say, noblesse oblige, or privilege implies responsibility. Nelson Mandela's father was a Tembu chief, and he exuded the dignity and gravitas of traditional chieftainship. But Mandela regarded this background as a call to duty, not as a permission to wallow in privilege. So Jesus is a king, but his kingdom is not of this world. Some of the earliest attempts to portray Jesus as a king uh, try to express this. They did not have him wearing a crown, for example, in the iconography. And he's also depicted um, carrying not a weapon, but the scriptures. In addition, in the, earth, the early iconography, his clothes are not rich, but rather plain and simple. And this is true to his own ambivalence about his kingship, which, in which he, which he both claims and yet distances from the kingship of this world. So how can we tell that he is a king in these early images? The artists have conveyed his kingship by the way that they have painted his face. They've attempted to show him to be a man of great nobility. It is in his face that we perceive his dignity and graciousness. graciousness. Occasionally, uh, one sees such a face, uh, and the memory of it often stays with us. An ordinary person, a stranger in a crowd perhaps, can strike one as having a face of great dignity 
and a kind of natural authority. It's the kind of face that when we see it, we automatically feel a sense of respect for that person. Um, this is what the early painters tried to do with Jesus the King, uh, and the tradition continues today. Now, it's true that there is another tradition in which Jesus is portrayed as a kind of royal figure with a crown and the other symbols of an earthly king. Here we may be getting to the point where painters are court painters and have been around perhaps a little too long, the kings of this earth. But even in this tradition, the difference between Christ the king and the kings of the earth is, uh, is suggested. For example, uh, the artist may put crosses uh, in the bejeweled crown on his head, uh, or another may put crosses on his scepter, or he may have crosses all over his robes. All of this is trying to be faithful to his own message about himself and his kingship. That is, my kingship is not of this world. But when all is said and done, the fact is that kings of this world do not die on the cross, and if they can avoid it. They would prefer that their enemies should die on crosses. The kings of this world do not normally go around on foot serving the poor, the blind, and the lame. Sometimes they do get out of their uh, armored vehicles and uh, they do go a few meters on foot to shake hands with people for the TV cameras, but one can't help noticing the black-suited security guards keeping a close eye on uh, the bystanders. So Jesus really is a different kind of king altogether. Perhaps uh, St. Cyril of Alexandria put it the best. He says of Jesus that he has rule over all creatures, a rule not seized by violence, nor taken over from someone else, but by his being and by his nature by his being and by his nature. He has not usurped his kingly power, which is greater than any other king, and has not inherited it uh, from his, even from his ancestor David. Paradoxically, this Jesus, this peerless king, is a model of humility and service. He's a shepherd king without the trappings and pampering of ordinary kings. He is a king who rules by love and not by the rod and the fear of punishment. He is a king whose throne is a cross and who describes himself as being glorified and exalted precisely by mounting this terrible throne. And that is why those who wish to follow him seriously and be his servants and companions and to share in his ultimate glory and triumph have to be prepared to share in his way of being a king. If he were a king according to the norms of this world, he would be surrounded by idle and arrogant flunkies. But since he is a servant king, his attendants, that's us, have to adopt his demeanor, his way, his standards. And he is a king who calls his servants friends. And he treats them, that's to say us, as such. And this is the great good news of the kingship of Christ. Let's pray together now, as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week. <laughs>